Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Temi Tokwe Fagbemi. We begin today's program in West Africa where four government ministers have resigned in the Gambia as pressure mounts on President Yaya Jami to hand over power when his mandate expires this week. The Environment Minister has quit along with the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Finance and Trade. Meanwhile, reports in Algeria and other West African countries are preparing a joint force to intervene militarily in the Gambia if President Yaya Jami does not hand over power. Mr. Jame lost the December 1 vote to President-elect Adama Barrow, who is due to be sworn in on Thursday. The president initially considered defeat, but now says he will not step down. Well, let's get more on this story from a senior lecturer of history and international relations at the Lagos State University, Dr. Dr. Thomas, who joins us live on the program. You're welcome to the program, Dr. Thomas. So, what are your Hello. thoughts... Yeah. Yes, Dr. Thomas, what are your thoughts on the political yes. crisis in the Gambia? Well, in the first instance, I think it's an unnecessary uh, situation. It's an unnecessary development in the first instance uh, because ordinarily I do not expect uh, a, an electoral exercise that has taken place and that was adjudged to have been free and fair and, in fact, the loser. That is the president, that is Yahya Jami, had already accepted his, his defeat. And all of a sudden, he made a dramatic turnaround, uh, roundabout, and then decided that he was not going to accept the verdict again, the verdict of the people. So in this instance, I do not think it is necessary. If there are, I mean, there is enough problem for us in Africa than for us to be uh, increasing, you know, the, the, the numbers of wars that we have. Uh, the situation we should have now is how to develop Africa and how Gambia will develop. But uh, to create a world situation where people will now have to be evacuated away from this country uh, and then possibly people running away, you know, in, in this state of insecurity is absolutely unacceptable in, 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 in the modern or in contemporary Africa. Now, ECOWAS has threatened to intervene militarily if President Jami does not relinquish power on Thursday. Is the use of force the solution to this crisis, and how equipped is ECOWAS in resolving this dispute? Well, I, I think there was sufficient time for the two parties, I mean the African leaders that had been uh, involved, that had been mediating in the crisis, and Jami. But from what is happening, it shows that Jami does not want the conflict to be resolved or the crisis to be resolved amicably. So he's, uh, I'm sure he's prepared for a war case situation, a war case scenario, worst case scenario or war case scenario. So he's prepared. But this, like I said earlier, is an unnecessary development. Uh, for the ECOWAS leaders to now contemplate sending military troops to ensure that this uh, that uh, Barrow is forcefully installed, uh, I, I think it will uh, aggravate and escalate the tension. But I still believe that more time should be given, despite the fact that, yes, uh, his time is going to expire uh, on Thursday. I still believe that a resolution, a peaceful and amicable resolution, can still be found if the two parties engage, continue to engage in dialogue in a way to resolve the crisis. Uh, yes, the, 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 the Jame has actually uh, created a situation where the judiciary will now be an impartial, I mean, will now be a partial umpire. However, I still believe that the uh, leaders, the white class leaders, should exercise some restraint in resolving the crisis because war does not pay the leaders and does not even pay the citizens. Now, the African Union has been largely silent on this matter. Is the crisis in the Gambia just a regional matter that ECOWAS should handle, or should the African Union also be involved in resolving this crisis? Uh, well, there is a sub-regional. There is a sub-regional organization that is the ECOWAS. So it is in a situation where the sub-regional organization that is directly involved, that is directly involved in the crisis, it is when they cannot resolve it that the African Union, which is the regional organization, can now come in. If the sub-regional leaders uh, have taken the initiative to mediate in the crisis and, uh, uh, and there can be no resolution of it, I think that is where the AU will intervene. But if you are saying that the AU can intervene, that is the regional 
organization can intervene at any point in time, then there may also be conflicts of, there may also be some disagreement between sub-regional power and the regional uh, leaders. And I, I think it is in a way to avoid this kind of thing that the initiative for peace has been given to the sub-regional uh, organization to resolve the matter before coming to the regional situation. And that is what I'm saying, that the conflict resolution mechanism should extend to the regional organization, which is the uh, AU, you know, on before you can declare war. So I do not expect ECOWAS leaders to declare war, even if it is Thursday, even if it is if it's some at last. I do not expect them to declare war on Thursday. I expect them to now take the matter to the regional body and then have an encompassing and all-inclusive resolution to the crisis. Possibly, uh, Jame may respect the decision or the resolution taken at that general umbrella, you know, better than what it, 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 it I mean, is happening at the sub-regional level. Dr. Dr. Famos, thank you so much for joining us on Network Africa. You're welcome.